Hello everyone. Thank you for coming up today. My old subscribers, thank you. And to those that are viewing for the first time or that have not subscribed, please click on the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified each time we upload a new video. And to my new subscribers, thank you for subscribing. A caretaker allegedly kills first year decade police student. This incident happened at one of the off campus hostels called Eziwani Lodge on Tuesday. But the disease, he is a first year student of the Department of Building Technology. He died in the hospital yesterday, that's February 6th. That is a very sad story that has just happened and it's not a good sight to behold at all. It was gathered that the caretaker whose name could not be ascertained hit the student with a wood on his stomach. And according to some of the students in the hostel, the caretaker had locked up the water supply because some students refused to pay the full house rent. However, the students who argued that they did not live in the hostel between March 2020 and January 2021 following the COVID-19 lockdown, later opened the tap and fetched water. When the caretaker came back and saw the tap opened, he used a saw and cut open the water pipe. This led to an argument during which he allegedly picked up a wood and hit the disease on his stomach. The caretaker was said to have run away after the incident had happened, leaving Anthony, that is the student, in the pool of his own blood. But fellow students rushed Anthony to the nearby hospital. But it was so sad that they rejected him in the hospital where he was rushed to. And the other option the student had was they now later took him to Federal Medical Center Owere, where he later died yesterday. And the officer in charge of the Nekedi police station confirmed this incident and said that currently this caretaker is in police custody and the case would also be handed over to the CID heading tomorrow being Monday for further investigation. You can see the pictures are kind of graphic though, but you can see that it's a very young boy who is in his first year. I'm sure another sad thing here is probably if only the hospital they went to at first had accepted to take this boy in. Maybe all of this, this death wouldn't have happened. He might have survived. But you know that delayance of someone who is already in his pool of blood and losing blood. You are taking him somewhere and not like it's flight. You're going on the road and then you even encounter traffic. It's not that the road is completely clear. You would have other vehicles. So the more they stay on the road, the more this boy is losing blood. It's really painful. You can see that he's a young guy and that's, that's him lying there. And look at the heavy stick a human being would use on a fellow human being. For what? Water that is free gift from God. Even though, yes, um, the supply sources, you have to pay for you to get um, water but that doesn't mean that you should take the laws into your hands and treat a young guy like this in this manner you can imagine how hard he must have hit this boy for him to have collapsed and got to the point of death you can see from even from the pictures though they are graphic um a whole lot can be shown fully here. He was even bleeding out from his nose. That's to tell you that the gravity of this stick to his stomach was so much. Why do things like this? Why would this caretaker decide to do this? Why didn't he just walk away? Fine, he had already cut off after the student had gone 
to use the water, open up the tap. He got so mad that he had to cut off the water supply at the top of the pipe. You have done that. Then why don't you just walk away? I'm sure this is a very matured man. And these are younger guys that are just trying to help their career or build a career for themselves. He should have just walked away. On the other hand, he would have even understood with them. Okay, they are just coming in to school after a long period of homestay due to the coronavirus. And now they just resumed. He would have even just given them the benefits of that or just given them a little bit of time. Then if after some period of time they don't pay the rent, then he can, you can imagine that they're just coming back to resume school and then he's now mad at them for not paying their rent. It's really, really sad. And again, water is very essential. You expect people to stay without water from morning to how will they survive? The thing about this water is water is very essential due to the benefits. One of the major benefits is helps in circulation of blood. And then this man decides to how did this to water out because he feels that some of the students have not paid rent? Why don't you call out those that have not paid rent? Why include every other person? Okay, if it's a majority of the students and they're all saying the same thing, why didn't you just give them time? Let them at least stay for some time and then you start counting the rent. They are just coming back to resume school again. And in a situation whereby it's not just one person, then why did he have to go about it by inflicting this heavy injury on this particular guy? It's better he would have gone to report to authorities and then let the authorities handle it. In situations like this, you go and report to the authorities, definitely, or the owner of the house, because he is just a caretaker. And sometimes, you know, some caretakers decide to act like they are the landlords or the owners of the house. Yes, you've been entrusted this house to take care of the house and to ensure that everything is fine in the house. But at the same time, you should also be considerate in certain situations like this situation right now. If you look at it critically, these guys are just coming into school. They just resumed, just coming in January. And then you're asking for the rent. I don't understand. Is he asking for rent of out of campus house from march till the or is, he, is he asking for rent for the few days they have stayed because from january to february february this was just happening on friday which was a uh, fifth and then look at you can compare how many days they have just stayed and he is now coming to ask for rent rent what do you think about this is it shouldn't this guy have given this student some time let them even at least stay for some time he knows that water is very essential. He would have said, okay, all right, from so so time, you can start paying up. There's nothing in him letting them stay and stay some amount of time that you know that, yes, you can even meet, walk up to them and boldly say, please, your rent. Yeah, or he would have put down a memo before they came back to the house. That's how they do. You can write a notice and say, look, 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 from so so day, I will start receiving the rent again. Probably he had said that verbally. I guess he did because that's what he was saying that he had already like made that pronouncement before, it seems. And then he locked up the tap because of the lack of payment of the rent. And he now came back and he observed that the tap had been opened. Fine, he had already told them. But then you still check it out from January till now February. Is it even up to a long period of time for them to pay? If not for anything, he would have taken into consideration that these kids not staying in the house was not as a result of their own fault. It's the situation of the whole world, not just a state or a country. Then why take a stick and hit someone else's child? This is someone's child. Look at this very young guy. How is his parents going to take this now? A child left the house healthy and strong, going back to build up his, his career. And then you'll be called on the phone to come and pick up cops. It's really heartbreaking. It's so painful that even talking about it or seeing things like this, it's really difficult. 
Look at parents are struggling and trying to make ends meet, trying to help kids go back to school, trying to ensure that everything is fine. You can imagine after spending all the money they spent on this young guy and helping to ensure that he furthers his education. It's not easy to even train young ones in school. But look at now how this parent will be so devastated. This is the kind of thing that will lead some parents would even just collapse from there. Taking out of nowhere or shock, out of shock and surprise, some parents collapse and they don't wake up again. It's so devastating. Look at this guy. is a very young guy. He didn't deserve this kind of a thing. This man just took the laws into his hands. And then he ran away. Obviously, he knew that what he did was wrong. And he knew that this guy might have even died. That's why he ran away. But thanks be to Almighty God that he has been caught. You don't inf infringe injuries, pain on people like this. They don't, I don't think they have the right to even, they don't even have the right to do that. Because these are people's children, one. Secondly, they are renting your own apartment you don't have the right to raise hands on people where there are situations where it has really elapsed for your rent to be paid and you don't pay it then you would involve either the policeman or whoever is in charge you involve them and not you deciding to do what you really want to do out of anger I feel so sorry for this family of this guy. And I feel so sorry for this guy. He never knew that he would come to his own end. This would serve as a big lesson to all other caretakers who take the laws into their hands. Some of these caretakers, they don't even care. They'll break your house down, bring out your things. And that's even against the law. But they don't care. You see that some of these caretakers even act more like the owner of the house that even the main owner when you see the owner of the house you won't even believe that he is the owner you would think the caretaker is the owner because they tend to go out of bounds they, they tend to overdo their own thing in the sense that you end up trying to see how you can make sure that everything is okay with you to avoid problems People should stop taking the laws into their hands. What's with the killing these days? Any little thing, someone just react. The next thing, the person is killing his fellow human being out of anger or argument. It has become a norm this recent days or for the past few months. You just hear someone argument, out of an argument, they kill themselves. One person is dead or both people or three of them eventually dies. Why all this? Human lives are very important human lives should be valued don't treat human lives like they are just some piece of clothing that you can destroy and then go to the market and pick them up no when they are gone they are gone you don't take loved ones away from 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 them this man has just taken a loved one from his own family imagine how a parent and and siblings will be right now you just call and say oh please come Something has happened to you. So now you get there what you're seeing is this corpse. So heartbreaking and devastating. People should please learn to control their temperament. Control your anger. It doesn't really pay when you act out of anger. You end up doing things that you would regret. Right now this caretaker is going to stay in jail. Because it's murder. There's no other two ways about it. He has murdered somebody. And then... There are laws that he needs to face, which he would face them. I'm sure he'll be charged with first degree murder because this is mother, straight away mother. There's no hidden truth about it. This is what anger has led him to do. It's so heartbreaking that people don't value lives anymore. People even value properties more than lives of their fellow human beings. It's such a pity. May the soul of Anthony rest in perfect peace with the Lord. May Almighty God console his parents, siblings, every other family members, friends and well-wishers, and every other person that knew him. May God console them. It's so breaking to say things like this or to even talk about issues like this. It's really painful. And another thing again is 
why is it that some hospitals you will see someone is dying someone is in this pool of blood dying and then rather than just taking the person to see how you can revive this person you will reject the person how do they feel do you know why is the hospital there some of them would say if you don't pay they won't treat you and they don't mind watching you die Please, I think something needs to be done about things that are happening like this. When you go to some hospitals, they would see that someone is dying. They would say no, they would reject that corpse. Or they will reject that person before the person is even dead. They are already rejecting the person. Then how are you expecting someone who is in a critical condition to survive? You see, they had to travel, move all the way, drive all the way to a um, federal medical center in a way before they could get him treated and see he just died yesterday the pain was so much you can imagine someone who has lost a lot of blood and then he's not even being treated immediately no immediate attention he has to be transferred to another place where he later died he will die because someone who has been losing blood what are you expecting please hospitals should learn to put things into consideration first some hospitals are more concerned about the money they will get rather than treating patients. This idea of you carry, you bring someone who is almost dying to the hospital and they reject the person. It's not proper. It's uncalled for. Some will now say, some hospitals will say, uh, when you come with strange injuries or strange wounds or gunshot, they wouldn't want to take, um, get involved to avoid police and all of that. But it is not still an excuse to reject people that are almost dying and they are coming to them for help this should be addressed because so many people if you go deep down and stretch a lot of people have lost their lives as a result of this kind of an act from the hospital you go in there they are saying no they can't take you in you should go somewhere else and seeing you dying it's so painful that it's still happening even up till now it's really really painful well once again, may the soul of Anthony rest in perfect peace with the Lord. Friends, what do you have to say about this? Analyzing this whole incident, the caretaker and the students, the whole of the students that actually had the argument with him. What do you think should have been done better to have avoided this whole thing? I know, yes, some students can, out of anger too, talk back at elders, or mature people in a manner that they wouldn't like, but notwithstanding still, it is still not enough reason for him to have hit that guy in his stomach with such a big stick as this. Please, whatever you think, please put that down at the comment section. Friends, I'm here today to talk about how to start up a new YouTube channel. So for those that are looking to start up a new YouTube channel, probably you've been trying to figure out how to go about it or you have been trying to see what it entails or what you need to start. That's why I'm here today to give you the easy way for you to get this done. Not just the easy but the best method and also to give you or to talk about the best teacher who will give you all that it's required for you to start up your own youtube channel this is a teacher he is really successful with his youtube and he has been a teacher for so long now Teacher is Matt Pa. He's going to give you a step-by-step -step method on how to start up your own YouTube channel. No stone unturned. Every step of the way, he's going to lead you through it. You have links that you can actually reach out to him and communicate with him directly. That's Matt Pa there. You can see the huge successes he has made in YouTube. You can see his silver. You can see the gold. You can also see his revenue that he's actually making on YouTube, which is very huge. 
he is going to give you a YouTube step-by-step tube mastery class every step of the way from the beginning of the opening of the channel to how you can start up and put up your videos he is leaving no stone unturned like i said so for those that are seeking for how to start up their own youtube channel this is the easiest and the fastest way for you to have access to this particular teacher who is honest and straightforward and you will enjoy every bit of the class and you will have lots of gain at the end of your class you will have lots to hold on to and to start up your own youtube channel it's going to be like an abc class starting from the scratch so please for those of you that are interested in starting up your own YouTube channel, Matt Pa, he is the teacher and you will have direct access to him. I'm dropping the link below. So please, you just click on that link and you will have access to Matt Pa's class. He is going to give you the whole content of YouTube and all that it takes for you to be successful in youtube and how to start youtube from the scratch like i said and i'm going to repeat he's leaving no stone unturned and it's so interesting that if you have any kind of complaint no matter the time you have this complaint or you are confused about anything you can communicate directly to him and he will give you a response as soon as he gets your question or as soon as he gets your mail or anything you're trying to confirm from him. He is quick at responding and he will give you the right answers. And even if you go elsewhere to search, you'll find out that what he is saying is actually true. He wouldn't mislead you. So please, for those of you that want to start your own YouTube channel from the scratch and see how you can be successful on YouTube, please go to this link, click on the link below. So you will have access to the teacher. That's the teacher there you can see and see his success. You can go through that and then you click on the link so that you can have direct access to Matt Pa himself. This teacher you will enjoy and enjoy every bit of the classes that he's going to give to you. So friends, do not forget to click the link below so you have access to MathPass to Mastery class and he will give you the best teaching for YouTube you will really need to start your own channel. Friends, thank you for coming up today. Please, for those that have not subscribed, click on the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified each time we upload a new video. Thank you once again and God bless you all.